Now that you've learned a bit about refraction, we can seriously start to consider how glasses work. Now glasses consist of lenses. So we're going to start by looking in detail at some different types of lenses. Now two common types of lenses are converging lenses and diverging lenses. Converging lenses bring light rays together, diverging lenses cause light rays to separate. And so there's three common types of converging lens. We've got the double convex lens, which has two convex surfaces, the plano convex lens, which has one surface as a plane and the other surface is convex, and the convex meniscus, which has a very curved convex lens and a slightly less curved concave side. So let's have a look now at what happens when we shine parallel light beams onto a converging lens. Now what we have here is a photograph taken from on top showing parallel rays emerging from a light box. This is the light box here. Now these rays come towards a converging lens. at which point they are refracted. And you can see that they all cross each other at a point here. Now this point here is called the focus. And the distance between the focus and the lens, this length here, is called the focal length. So this image shows you what happens when parallel light rays enter the lens. Let's have a look now at some other situations using a converging lens. So what I have here is a large converging lens. And what I've drawn on the piece of paper is two little people. One little person, two little people. And hopefully to you at the moment, they look to be approximately the same size. Now what I'm going to do is hold this large converging lens between the little person and the camera. And now I'm moving the converging lens further and further away from one of those little people. And hopefully what you can see is that as the lens is getting further and further from the little person, the little person is appearing bigger and bigger, especially compared to the other little person who's not behind the lens. So this is showing this lens acting as a magnifying glass. So let's now have a look at a method of showing why this happens. Now in order to explain what happens with this magnifying glass, we're going to need to make use of these rules for ray tracing for lenses. So the rules are, number one, a ray coming from the top of the object traveling parallel to the axis is bent so that it passes through the focal point on the far side of the lens. Number two, a ray coming through the focal point on the near side emerges parallel to the axis. And number three, a ray coming through the centre of the lens is undeviated and passes through the lens without being bent. So let's put these rules into practice now to show what happens with our magnifying glass. Okay, so here's our little man. Here's the camera or your eye which is looking through the magnifying glass at the little man. Now this is our converging lens and we've marked on the focal point on each side of this converging lens. So let's now apply rule number one. So a ray coming from the top of the object, so here it's coming off the little man's head, and traveling parallel, so there it is, traveling parallel to the axis, is bent so that it passes through the focal point on the far side of the lens. So in the middle of the lens, it's bent to go through this focal point like this. So there we go, that's ray number one. Let's just write a little one above it so that we remember. Now rule number two, a ray coming through the focal point on the near side emerges parallel to the axis. Okay, now the focal point is behind the little man in this case. So we need to draw a line coming from the focal point 
up across the top of the little man and to the middle of the lens like this and it then emerges parallel to the axis so we then know that it comes along here parallel to the axis so let's label this as ray number two and ray number three a ray coming through the center of the lens is undeviated and passes through the lens without being bent so it comes from the top of the little man's head through the very middle of the lens and is not bent so it looks like this now you can see on this side of the lens where the eye or the camera is all these rays are diverging so what we're going to need to do now is trace them back to the point where they actually cross where the image will be formed so let's do that now we can do them in the inverse order so we'll trace along ray number three, trace it back. So the eye or the camera interprets it as originating it from this point as the eye doesn't realize what the lens is doing. Okay, now let's do ray number two. So the eye sees this ray is coming parallel to the axis from the lens and so imagines that it has always been do traveling that way. And finally, Ray number one is coming along this way, so if we trace it back, it goes through this point here. And so our brain interprets these three ways as all originating from this point. And so what we see is the top of the man's head formed here. We actually see the whole man here. So we interpret it as a large man formed behind the lens. And so this is a virtual image. The image isn't actually here because the rays never actually pass through this point. It's just that our brain interpreted the rays as coming from this point. So that is how a magnifying glass works and how we can apply those rules of ray tracing. Now, it's important when this acts as a magnifying glass that the little man is closer to the lens than the focal point is. If the little man moves back behind the focal point, then we're not going to get this magnifi magnification effect. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to work out what's going to happen. Now the other thing we observed was that as we moved this lens closer and closer to the eye or the camera, so the little man got closer and closer to the focal point, you can see that that's going to cause these rays to converge further and further back and so we're going to get more and more magnification of the image. Again, you may want to prove that to yourself by practicing the ray tracing in this case. Let's have a look at what else we can do now with a converging lens. So this photo shows you the equipment that we're about to use in the next demonstration. This demonstration is actually really exciting because it shows you how old style cinemas worked to project the images up on the screen. So what I've got here is a converging lens. I've got a light globe and behind the light globe, I've got a nice red power supply, which is powering that light globe, but you'll notice that it's nice and red. And so what we're going to do now is to try and get an image of the light globe and the power supply that it's illuminating behind it. So this is not a virtual image in this case. This is a real image and it's really there. And we're going to try and see it on a piece of paper, which we'll be using as the screen. Now I'm using some white paper here as a screen. And what I'm going to do is slowly increase my distance away from the lens and the globe behind the lens. So as we go back, 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 you can start to see the red power supply on this piece of paper. Back, back, we can get it even more in focus. So there we go. Now here's, here's the light globe and here's the power supply. And you can hopefully see that the light globe is actually upside down. And this image is actually magnified. It's much bigger on this piece of paper than it is in real life. And so what we're getting here is a real upside down magnified image. 
and that is what they created in old-fashioned film studios. They'd project an image up onto the screen and they'd have to have the film upside down to start with in order to make it project the correct way up. So what we're going to do now is apply ray tracing to the light globe that we've just seen to see why the image appears the way it does. So once again we'll just apply those three rules of ray tracing and see where the rays cross each other which will tell us where the top point on the image actually is. So ray number one comes from the top of the image travelling parallel to the axis to the lens. Once it goes, gets to the lens, because it's a parallel ray, it travels through the focal point on the other side of the lens. So this is ray number one. So ray number two originates from the same place. It goes through the focal point on the near side of the lens, and then when it has passed through the lens, it emerges parallel to the axis. So we can see it emerging like this. This is ray number two. Now ray number three originates in the same place. It goes through the center of the lens and we can see it then emerges straight through the lens on the other side. It keeps going in the straight line. So we can see where these three rays cross and this is where the image is formed. Because the rays actually travel through this point, in this case it's going to be a real image. And what we end up with is an upside down image of our light on this side of the lens. And that is what we actually observed in the experiment.